walked in with the plug. Yo, 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 it's your boy Diego Bay, and it's the Plug Radio LA, straight out of Hollywood, California. Hey, girl, Destiny Meyer, and this is The Hookup, where you get hooked up with all the latest artists and entertainment. So today we got my man Patrick. I told you we're mixing it up a little bit. Patrick, go ahead and explain to people what you do. Hello, everybody. My name is Patrick DeLetterber. I'm, uh, I go by Letterber Presents. You can find it on all social medias. I am uh, a performance artist, and I'm an event host, so I throw parties. I throw parties pretty much all around the world. Uh, I've done them as far as Dubai to uh, you know spring break parties in Fort Lauderdale and uh, you know college parties at University of Texas and then of course um, you know big stadiums or theaters and stuff. Uh, I also develop um, brands. Uh, I kind of uh, supervise and manage the development of ID identities, uh, not just for artists, but I do have done it with artists, but also for uh, companies and stuff. So finding out ways for them to uh, be able to market their stuff to their audience. So a lot of shit. What does it take to actually be someone like you for people who uh, actually want to be part of the entertainment business but do something like you? They don't want to be in the front lines or, or acting or singing or whatnot, but just the planner, the, the man to come to for, for all the big parties, for all the big names. What did, I mean, does it take schooling? What's, what's the no, steps? I mean, you gotta, well, one of the things in order to throw an event is you need an, a concept, an idea, and then of course you need money, okay? okay so once right. you have an idea or, or money, then you can use that money to hire the other people. Now, the trouble that a lot of people do is they don't have enough of a team, you know, behind any organization, or even any great artist, you have to have a team. And in order to really get people, you need funds to be able to pay them because volunteers, unfortunately, um, I've, hired, I've had security guard volunteers and at my parties, they're partying harder than the guests. Oh yeah, okay. and, and they don't pay security. They, they, they no, exactly, you know? So you need to always hire all those people and then right. you need to have, um, you need to have like a, a, a concept, uh, 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 whether that's why people pay for like future, that's why people pay for artists because they bring people. Right, so you want people to come to your location, even if you're limited to 100 people or you have 4,000 right. person space. And so anything is like, let's say you, you say, oh, it's gonna be a paint party. Well, now you gotta pay for paint supplies, but that idea, that concept will attract more people to your organization. And so how somebody can be like me is they gotta be rather, <laughs> rather um, smart and stupid at the same time, because uh, throwing events is also has a lot of liability. Um, you're putting yourself at risk a lot yeah. because basically uh, take crazy bets. Basically. Well, yeah, well, yeah, because um, you know if anybody gets hurt on your watch, uh, you are liable, or someone has to be liable. And right. if you're organizing it, uh, technically that's you. Um, so uh, first and foremost, if you're deciding to get into it, I would definitely suggest um, being aware of that. Um, and then number two, I do it as a weird kind of art. So like, I'm really all about creating experiences for people and how can you, you know, amplify somebody's experience in a location or in a certain time. So let's say if I have a location such as this and I've got this place for like four hours and I know that you're gonna be coming in through there, what can I do through sound, so the type of music, through lighting, through even just like the entrance, how can, from the moment you enter this property, can I control? Right, right, attracted to the... Yeah, not only control, but just give you an experience and, right. and allow you to absorb things. And, and of course, the thing with art though, okay, is that it's 50% out of the eye of the beholder. So I can do something, but it's up to you to decide what it really is or whether you like it or not. Right. Um, and I find that the beginnings of a party are the most important. So right when somebody walks into a location, how can you do something um, or have something happen that kind of thwarts their expectations. So if somebody comes into your event with like a preconceived notion, a preconceived idea, which you want, so they think, oh, I'm going to go to a paint party. So they think, oh, this is going to be paint or whatever. And then right when they arrive, if you can do something or provide something, and that can range anything from just like the setting. So I had an event where I had a, on the bottom a golf carts driving people up to this how, like hills house party. And so people already thought they were going to the hills. But then when they arrived there, they saw this golf cart and they, all of a sudden they were just like, whoa, like, where am I, where am I going? Right. You but that's the, that's the thing, I most definitely appreciate you being here because like I said, we're trying to mix it up. And, and most people don't understand there is somebody like you that's at the clubs, um, setting up the, the, the times and the dates, you know what I'm saying? But not a lot of people know that this kind of job exists or they don't, 
think about it basically when they're thinking pretty about pretty much have to manifest it you have to make it yourself and for like the first year or something while i was doing this i wasn't really i was losing a lot of money actually um because you you know if you don't have the money you got to do it yourself and you need to try to build a brand of um of your parties so you know if your last one was good then people want to go to the next one and word of mouth so tell us how you specifically started with the whole party well well, how I got into it, well, I always did it in like high school and like college, sorry mom. Um, but I, uh, I always threw kind of little events. Um, but I started working in music, I started doing uh, music management, as I told you, I, identity, uh, building like brands, you know, everything from clothing to visuals to um, film to getting producers and engineers together with artists um, to just like kind of overseeing that whole, even websites, overseeing just the whole creation of it. Um, and so I'd build these identities and then I'd, I'd need a platform to be able to, you know, showcase them and not only just showcase them, but, um, uh, you know, allow them to practice because live performance is such a vital um, for financial, you know, funnel for an artist, but also just like a vital part of the package. Right. They, need, they need experience being in front of people in different environments, you know, and some of them are not as appealing. Like some of them are little homes and you've got to be able to, how do you put on a show? How do you, here's a microphone and here's the audio isn't very good and everyone's cramped. How can you as the artist still communicate your message and what you want? Um, so I started putting the events together for that and then it kind of just snowballed because then I, I kind of, also did, I was like, oh, I like this. Let me, um, let me try and do one on a yacht. Let me try and do one at a pool. Let me try and do one in a frat house. Let me try and do one, ooh, at this big theater. Let me try and do one, you know, at this house. And then it just kind of spread. And let me try and add, you know, pillows. Uh, aside from like teaching branding and marketing and, and logos and whatnot, but um, teaching how to, other people how to plan parties and, and you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. Making that a career after you've already been successful so at this career. It's but is that something that, that you can see in, in your future? I guess. I, you don't remember, I told you I like to try and be the present. So you don't even know. I mean, uh, you know, one minute you're doing this, or, uh, you know, you're building identities for this, the next minute, you know, I'm, I'm working on elevators or something. It's crazy. Oh, I hope that don't, what the hell? That's, <laughs> no, I do. I, oh. I sell elevators. <laughs> I sell a state-of-the-art air-driven home elevator but called the pneumatic vacuum elevator. They look like a bank tube. They look like the Jetsons. So moving on to the marketing and branding side, mm -hmm. what exactly goes into that? Oh, uh, for, okay, so for, um, okay, so if you're an artist and you're up and coming and you're living wherever you are, whether Los Angeles, any part of the world, mm -hmm. um, one of the first things you should do first is, if, you know, of course, find a name, you know, what's your alias, whether it's your name or, or what's the nickname, you know, uh, and then you need to create a logo for that name um, and then you can trademark that name so you can control it because there are a few things that as an artist you can own and you should first and foremost own your own intellectual property and then from there um, you of course if you want to be a musician, a writer, a singer, uh, a rapper, um, whichever, uh, you start to build your portfolio so you start to collaborate with as many producers and artists and you try to find a sound, a voice, um, and that voice should be singular to you. Uh, you. If you're choosing the life of an artist, you need to know that you are an artist. And if you look at the history of art, um, it's not all about the lights, it's about sharing something and it's about revealing something, it's about being honest and truthful. And first and foremost, you need to be truthful in order to be able to convey your art, to share it with people, because then you have a confidence of being able to share it. Because like I said, it's 50% of the other person, you know, of the viewer. So once you create it and you put it out there, um, it's not yours anymore, you know? And so whatever you wanted it to mean, it doesn't matter because right. it's theirs. For building brands, then you go, once you have a sound, then you think of a visual. And that ranges everything from, okay, for photography, what kind of angles would you want to give? And you need to make that consistent, right. you know? And then even everything from clothing, like what do you want to wear? You Are know, you like my clothes? I know, I like it, I saw it. I saw the, the combo, you know? Unfortunately, uh, the music industry is a little bit superficial, um, so it's a game, so yeah. you need to understand that, and the only probably way to make yourself feel sane is to know that this is like, a, if you do that, like a costume. So what is your costume? So, and you, that's another thing about brands, is that w whether you're, you know, I don't know what's his real name, but like, let's say like Marcus Jackson, then you're DMX, like DMX is a different person. And you, as the brand, need to know that when I put on these glasses, boom, somebody else. Right. When I take them off, I'm back to paying my mortgage. You just touched my soul right I know, now. Right? 
No, very much so. And then you go from, and then you, you know, you need to build a website, a platform for people to be able to share your music. Um, social media is uh, is an important aspect. Just just because it's um, a, a reliable number, um, most of the anything with money is all about numbers. It's a financial game. Um, so you just gotta create a package and then be consistent with it and then be willing to adapt it, be willing to change it, um, have a group of people that you respect, and then just shoot it out to the web. And just go for it. And try and build, try and try and build an audience before you approach somebody like an, a label or something, because you will have more leverage. Um, and that audience is the only power that, not the only power, but the, one of the biggest powers that you have. And um, and hopefully if you have the audience, you don't even need them. So yeah. you're on platform. Um, I think you touched on a lot of important information that people up and coming need to know and maybe people who are struggling trying to do what you're doing um, need to hear as well, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate having you here most definitely. Yeah, no, just to them, just share. Do this because you want to do it. Do this because you have something to say and then hope every day that you're helping to nurture that and trying to say it. And just just for yourself, just try to be make it as honest and truthful as possible. The most truthful art is the one that gets the most well received. Um, and it's tough and it's scary and it's difficult and that's why you're an artist. That's why you are emotional. That's why you, you've chosen to do whatever you it is you're doing. Right. So just make sure that it's truthful because a lot of art isn't and a lot of some successful art isn't. So do not allow the untruthful, successful art to be a reason for you to be like, oh, well, if he's doing it, I'm doing it. No, you know, because it's all your legacy. It's all what you're gonna wanna leave behind. One more time, Patrick, before we get out of here, mm -hmm. tell the people where they can find you. Um, if you have mentor videos on YouTube, if you're actually selling mentor videos. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? If you need some help, you know what I mean? I help you too, but yeah, no. Let the people know one more time where they can find you. What's up guys? My name is Patrick DeLetterber. You can find me at Letterber Presents on all uh, social medias, also on a website, Letterber Presents, and also Letterber Presents at gmail.com if you want to try and contact me. Um, awesome, thank you so much. <laughs> Friggin' awesome. Hey, it's your boy Diego Bay, and it's the Plug Radio LA, straight out of Hollywood, California, and Vault Studios LA. And this is your girl, Dusty Meyer, and this is where you get plugged and stay connected. Oh, check out my pink socks.